going on guys? This is Travis, your host of Hero's Journey. We're back with another video. This is episode 70. Can, can you believe it? Somehow we have gone to 70 episodes. Super grateful for everyone always checking them out. And we will continue to the monumental 100th episode that will soon be happening. Today's topic, five reasons I love the A7S 3 now, I'm shooting with the a7S 3 now, and this may look a lot like it, but this is actually my a7 III, which my first thing I talk about, I can show you the difference, why the a7S 3 trumps the poor a7 III, which is still an amazing camera, but has been replaced by my new baby. So the first thing that I love about the a7S 3 is the flip screen. Right now, I am shooting with the a7S 3 I have the camera, the uh, LCD screen of the camera, turned, flipped, so I can see myself. A7 III, I get this flip. Now, this is great. Kind of works better for photography, so you can really get a perfect perspective and a straight perspective. But when you film yourself with this little guy, you can't see yourself. There's no way to know what, what the frame looks like. So you're shooting yourself, hey, how's it going, Travis here, you know, and you could be out of focus, you could be not recording, you would never know. Now there is a teeny tally light on the side somewhere that can kind of help you, and I have a mirror hack, and I put a mirror on top of this, and that changes that. But this is one of the biggest reasons why I love the A7S III. Now, coming from the Panasonic line, the GH1, which, you know, is a legend now, that had a flip screen, and even the GH5 has a flip screen. Now, it's a kind of a, a heated topic, what people like, but for me, I cannot go without the flip screen anymore. Taking this, when I got this camera, I knew this would be a problem, but I really wanted just to get more into full frame. I wanted to try out Sony. This was getting such great reviews, and it was just everyone loved it, that I was like, all right, I'm going to sacrifice and see if, you know, I really uh, need a flip screen and I learned I need one. So out with this and with the flip screen. Uh, the next reason I love the A7S III is the viewfinder. Now the EVF, this is the thing you put your your eye in to, to look through the camera. Another camera just came out, the Sony FX3, which is basically the same thing, a little couple differences, but it does not have an EVF. You have to get it put on, on top. Um, the EVF on this A7S III, it's like looking at like an 8K TV up close. It's like you're looking into like an IMAX uh, projector. Like it is insane. <clears throat> it's better in real life. It's unbelievable. You look into this thing, you shoot it with just the back screen, you know, and then you're like, all right, let's see how that looked. And you look in, in there, and you're like, oh my Lord, this looks amazing. But, but it's funny how sometimes you don't really know how it's going to look. Like when you shoot a lot of stuff, a lot of times you shoot it and you're outside or you just don't really know unless you have a big monitor how the footage is going to look. You look in this the EVF of the A7S III, you look in there and you play the video back or even when you're shooting and you're like, oh my God, it's a whole new world. It's insane. It is insane. So that is another reason I love the A7S III. Um, the third reason I love the A7S III is the 10-bit. Now this camera has 10 bits of color, 422 10-bit. The A7 III only had 4208 8-bit, I believe. Now, not being a huge colorist and really, um, you know, being okay with matching colors and I've shot with different cameras on shoots, etc. and had to match them, and match them and I've made do. But when you have 10 bit out of the camera, this it just opens up this whole world. Again, part of the new world I'm now in, where it's it's insane. Like the colors coming out of this thing are awesome. They're kind of updated from this, not just the 8 bit, but the color science is a little different. And even though, <clears throat> excuse me, Cinetone is out, S Cinetone, I still like shooting with picture profile off. I think it's has a great balance of a little bit of saturation and with the compression from Instagram and YouTube, etc., I think I come out looking great. You know, you know, no surprise there. I'm a handsome guy. What can I say? But even compared to this footage on the 8-bit, the skin tones, etc., just 
highlights, darks, and, and then when you push them, when you push into the dark or push into the bright, you get more grain, you get more blocks. It just doesn't end up good. You push these colors with the 10-bit A7S3, you, it's just gold. You're pushing the purple, it will look purple and great. You push the black, it will look black and great. You push the white, it will look great. That And that little bit of flexibility in post-processing and when you're editing, even if it's just a teeny bit of exposure correction, it helps so much. And I can't believe that, um, not that I wasn't a believer, but you know, I was like, eh, but now I'm sold. Like now, another requirement when I buy cameras is, has to have flip screen, has to be 10 bit. The fourth reason I love the A7S III is the autofocus. This freaking autofocus is ridiculous. Right now, there's a little box on my eye, and I'm gonna move close. The box is gonna stay on my eye. Okay, I'm gonna move back. The box is, and this box means that the focus is following me. So this is basically like when you're manually focusing and you're follow focusing. So you'd be turning the focus following. This is just all auto, and I'm pretty zoomed in. The lighting is pretty good in here as well, but this is just unbelievable because compared to the competition, this autofocus really, it's the best. It's the best. Um, I don't know. We can have a debate in the comments if you guys want, but look, I'm just, I'll even go a little faster. It just won't lose me. It will not lose me. It's insane. I'm gonna leave the screen. Look at that. I mean, you can't beat it. You can't beat it. So. I know with the Panasonic, with the, I think the S1 and the, you know, those got better at the autofocus, but I know the big um, Achilles heel, if, that, if that's the right term, of the GH5, Panasonic GH5, was its autofocus. It would pulse. And if you've ever seen pulsing, we don't like that. Pulsing is, is no bueno. Now, even the A7 III has amazing autofocus, but it's not as good as this. It doesn't have the teeny eye tracker. It has more of a box around your face. And now I know, you know, shoot manual, bro. Listen, I do shoot manual. Everything is manual besides the focus because this autofocus, it works so well. Once you start using it, you're like, wow, this is so amazing. It's like, it's just, it's, it's, in, it's insane. It's baffling. So you kind of just get like caught using it more and more than one day. You're like, wow, I'm shooting in autofocus all the time. And just kind of happen. So unless I'm locked off, I'm behind the camera and I know there's going to be some changes and I don't want the focus to shift at all, then I will manually focus. But if I'm filming myself like this, it's autofocus all day. Um, even with this, I would manually focus sometimes because it would shift sometimes. But I have not really had an issue with this in focusing. Um, there's only been one or two slight little scenarios I've noticed it loses me. But overall, it's so impressive. It's unbelievable, unbelievable. And that's the fourth threes. And now the fifth, the fifth and final of this list, but not final of all the reasons I love this, but the fifth reason the A7S III is a great camera and I love it, is the S and Q mode. And also the fact that with an update that recently happened, the S and Q mode on the A7S III, you can have 60 frames per second slow mode in camera so you can watch the, the movie back and it'll be slow mode. And you can have active stabilization. So active stabe during that slow motion. So um, you know if you're shooting slow motion, it's gonna be a higher frame rate. So the camera is gonna end up being not shaky, but it's gonna have, the action will have the illusion of moving faster because you're, there's more frames per every second. So right now I'm shooting at 24 frames per second, so there's a little motion blur. But if this was shot at 60 or 120, there would be no motion blur, and you would just see my hand moving perfectly, but it would still be the same motion. It would still be, um, but you would be like, oh, something's kind of weird, or it seems like a soap opera, or it almost seems like I'm watching Transformers, or like a action-packed movie. And because a lot of times when they shoot action, you want to have more frames, so then you catch more of the action. Naturally, our eyes kind of see more in this, uh, like in this frame rate where there's a little bit of blur, so it seems a little hyper realistic to shoot at a higher frame rate at all times. So, 
but a lot of people they'll shoot at 60 frames per second and then put it on a 24 frames per second timeline and it's kind of hard to even notice the difference but you do that because then you can slow down some of the footage and it'll be nice and smooth but what the s and q mode does is actually it, you shoot in slow-mo it's automatically in slow-mo which some people might be like eh that's kind of lame and you can't shoot sound so it doesn't have any audio but I've noticed for things like reels and just short little cool slow-mo tidbit, uh, tidbits, like when I see Mr. Squirrel stop by, I'm like, oh, Mr. Squirrel's here, sick. Grab the A7S III, throw it in the S and Q. I can get all close up to him, handheld, and because it's on the active stave mode as well, it's only a teeny bit of cropping, which kind of actually works sometimes because closer the better usually when you're filming those kind of things in slow-mo. Handheld, let's get nice and in there to shoot Mr. Squirrel. All right, Mr. Squirrel, let's see it. Boom, 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 and I'm shooting. 60 frames per second, slow mode, and it's steady. And some of those shots are just like amazing, and it's so fun to just record, look back in your camera, and then when you look in here, and you see that beautiful slow-mo 4K footage, nice and slow, and you're looking in the, the IMAX uh, viewfinder in here, I mean, you can't beat it. Like, the technology has gotten so far that you're shooting movie-level slow-mo right in camera and right away. You can watch it in slow-mo. There's a ambulance coming, all right? I'm over here, guys. Leave me alone for now, all right? I promise it wasn't me. It wasn't me. But it's just amazing where we're at now and just super thankful to be in this moment of time in the camera industry and... You know, I, I would have never thought back growing up making skate videos, shooting on high 8 tapes and mini DV tapes, not even knowing the frame rate, not even knowing any of that, to getting to this, this spot where I'm basically in my hand and I'm shooting with cameras that can basically shoot a movie and you'd have to be pixel peeping to even to notice the difference. It's insane. I'm exaggerating a little bit, but it really is just remarkable so all right guys those are five reasons i love the a7s3 and it is the best camera ever so i appreciate everyone stopping by and watch when i move in to hit stop record it's going to keep following me in focus because it's the best and i appreciate you guys have a good one peace